let's go into the potential most valuable player for the NBA season. And that's quite juicy and very important for these players as well. We have three finalists in, the, in this category. There's the box forward, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and there's the Houston Rockets guard, James Harden, and Lakers forward, LeBron James, who will wear the crown. Now, voting for the awards was based on the games played from the start of the regular season through March 11. And reports have it that the voting did not include any performances from the seeding games conducted in the league's bubble. So, who do you really think will be crowned the MVP of um, the NBA 2020 season? Will it be Giannis? Will it be LeBron or James Harden? Well, I'll allow Marka once again to make a choice as Kotsi demands that we give honor to the ladies, ladies. first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's dissect this. Mm. Yes, okay, Harden is averaging 34.3 points, 6.6 .6 rebounds, 7.5 assists. LeBron, 25.3 points, 7.8 rebounds, 10.2 assists. Giannis, 29.5 points, 13.6 rebounds, and 5.6 assists. Now, if you look at their numbers, they're pretty close. Yeah. You know, yes, Harden is leading when we're looking at points um, per game prior to the bubble. But for me, I'm going to go with Giannis. Okay. Why am I going to go with Giannis? Because for me, he has that it factor. Mm. Yes, we can look at what happened in the bubble, but let's not pay attention to what happened in the bubble, bubble. prior to the bubble. Um, you know, he really led his team. He was doing it offensively, defensively, mm. um, bringing the ball up, sharing the ball, and he just really had that great impact yeah. on his team. And as young as he is, he is a, a force to reckon with. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. it didn't work out so well for them in the playoffs. But Giannis, for me, prior to the bubble, was definitely an a, a MVP choice. Mm. He has already gotten Defensive Player of the Year. So when I really look at things in reality, I don't think they're going <laughs> to give him MVP and Defensive Player of, of the Year. But if I had to choose, I would put my money on him. I mean, if, if he deserves it, Victor, um, don't you think it should go ahead to get... But I, I, I believe you're not on, in support with Marco <laughs> on this one. Yeah, I'm not in support of this. I, he's, he is deserving. He has done a good job this yes, season. true. But I feel LeBron is right on par. He's, he's right up there with him. Mm. Um, without LeBron on the Lakers team, they're, they're pretty much the Pelicans. Mm. What about okay. AD now? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They're pretty <laughs> more the Pelicans without LeBron on the team. Okay. LeBron is the it factor for them. He does everything well. Um, he's averaging 25.3. Uh, he averaged 25.3, 7.2. He leads the league in assists and he's still mm. doing it. We are, they have only two guys scoring over 20-something points. Yeah. Every other person is 10 points, 7 points. I think Rondo is even the third highest scorer and he has just played four games in the bubble. Mm. So. LeBron is it for me. LeBron, I mean, looking at both players now, I think they've done well. And I, I checked a bit of um, the rankings from some sports fans and all. It looks like Giannis is topping LeBron yeah. James on this one. And knowing that this is going to happen from the 11th of March till the NBA went on break before they went into the bubble. So looking at it strategically and... Uh, um, where the fingers are pointing, it looks like it's Yanis. But yes, we know on paper and um, on deliveries, LeBron James has been in and out yeah. for the Lakers. And uh, no one is talking about James Harden. What if he gets to win this one? <laughs> I don't think so. I think he should have won last year. I mm. felt he was in a better position to win last year. They had a better record. Um, but we've seen James Harden do the same thing he's been doing. There's no special thing he has done apart from averaging over 30 points in three mm. seasons. So. Yeah. No I agree. I think for me, why I wouldn't choose James, Hard James Harden, because it's not just on paper stats, yeah. right? What impact do you have on your team? team? What record does your team have? Mm. And like he said, he's scoring 30 plus points. They get to the playoffs. They don't really do much. During the um, regular season games, they mm -hmm. kind of fall like third, fourth, fifth, yeah, yeah. you know, in that range. They're never topping the league in regular season. So why should I give you MVP? Because mm -hmm. you're scoring 30 plus points. You're also taking a lot of shots a game. So we have to also look at that as well. And the ball is in his hand, hands Every a time. lot. <laughs> like almost like 60% of the game, you know, yeah. he has to have the ball in his hands which is helping his stats, but what is, what is it doing for the team? It, mm. For me, it's not enough. Yeah, you know, you, you talk about him um, being the go-to man for the Houston Rockets. Let's take our minds back to 
Kobe when he was still um, playing basketball with the Lakers and may he so rest in peace. Um, it felt like it was all balls to Kobe. Kobe scores more than 50 points in a game. He helps the Lakers win games and all that. And he pushes the team forward. Don't you think that's the same thing um, James Harden is trying to do with his team, Houston Rockets? The same thing applies to LeBron, um, bringing in all the force from defense to the offense with the Lakers. And uh, the same can be said for the Milwaukee Bucks. So I, I don't think we should put in um, uh, a player trying to control the game alone as one of the considerations on uh, the fact that any of them will get to win the MVP. Well, it's not just controlling, I guess, the tempo. It's mm -hmm. the impact that that player has on the on team. The team yeah. If you're going to be MVP, what is your team doing? How good is your team? Mm -hmm. How better do you make your, your teammates? Yeah. Like, what is your impact, not just stats? So that's why, for me, I wouldn't choose Harden because I don't think his impact is felt as much as LeBron James and Giannis. Giannis. Okay. Definitely. All right, um, Victor, any opposition? Uh, exactly. She said it all. He, mm. He's doing what he has done over and over and again. And we, we are tired of it, honestly. Mm. <laughs> if you score 30 points a game and you really don't change the way your team plays, it really does not change anything for the season. So. Mm. True. Well, I, I got a couple of um, comments off um, social media because I put up a tweet yesterday and uh, people went head, head to head with each other. It was almost going to cost the Twitter fight and all. <laughs> um, so this is from Sam Ade. I mean, he said, um, I know the MVP mostly had to do with the regular season, but the team's performance in the playoffs also have to be put into account, but it's not going to be put into account this time around. And Yanis wasn't that fantastic after the restart. James Harden does have a shout, but his team didn't get anywhere, while Lakers and LeBron are having a fantastic time. And uh, he's looking at um, um, LeBron getting to win this one. This other comment says, um, both James, ha James Harden and Yanis uh, out of the series. But yeah, James Harden still has a chance uh, against the Lakers and that game goes down later today. Yes, they have a chance. It can happen. Miracles do happen. Uh, <laughs> King LeBron is on course to get to the conference final and highly likely to reach the NBA finals. Therefore, LeBron for the going is, uh, for, for the gong in his own opinion. Uh, this is a comment all from Twitter. And uh, guys are actually peeping LeBron for this one. But I'm glad that they're not, they're not looking at um, the bubble. The bubble. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was from the regular season. So um, if you take our minds back to when we had active basketball, like I said, Giannis is a standout performer for me. But it all depends on the voting system. Yeah. Because that's I, I, I resonate with that, um, mm. you know, the, the, the Twitter. Yeah. But... For me, we're looking at before the bubble. Yeah. And bef that January, February, March, Giannis was dominating. Mm. On the boards, points, defensively, all around dominating. And the team, their team had the best record in the NBA mm. um, prior to the bubble. So, I mean... Okay. It just says it right there, right? All right. We'll have um, Femi Adefeso joining us uh, via phone call. He will also um, share his thoughts on this, who he thinks the MVP will be for this year. And depending on we have him, uh, let's still talk about um, 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 the MVP. Uh, no date has been set for the announcement. I'm hearing next week, Tuesday, it should mm -hmm. be announced, but not, not confirmed yet. But would you be disappointed if none of LeBron and um, Giannis gets to win it, Victor? Yes, I will be. Mm -hmm. I will be. Um, there's a narrative for the LeBron um, push to the MVP, which mm -hmm. is, is in his 17th year. He's doing so many good things in the league, mm -hmm. leading league in assists. And Giannis has just been incredible throughout the season. Mm. His best record in the league. So why don't you just give it to either of those guys? Mm. Yeah. Mm. All right. Uh, we're, we're looking forward to uh, that announcement. Yeah, we have Femi Adifeso joining us live. And, uh, of course, I'm sure he has heard a bit of the... Um, conversation and analyst uh, an analysis. Let's hear his own part of uh, the divide. Uh, hi, uh, good to have you with us, Femi. Hi, Femi. Hi, Duka. Good morning. Good to be show with you. Yeah, morning. And uh, I'm sure you've heard the conversation. Uh, who do you think the MVP will be? We have Yanis Antetokounmpo. There's also LeBron James and, uh, of course, James Harden. What's your say? Um, with regard to who wins the MVP, it's either here or there. But if I if I'm to pick based on um, personal preference, or let me not use the word personal preference, let me use the word person who actually really deserves based on the modalities the NBA sets. Uh, easily, I would go for Yanis at the table and see 
based on the fact that you know, the NBA said what would be used to determine you know, the award winners would be the play before the bubble began. And uh, and of course that could change because if they now decide, okay, you know what, let's add post season two, which is usually not the case, then he probably won't um, be the best person to take that because of how often the team was um, in, in the bubble and right how they are playing the But in the regular season, you know, working both of the best team in the NBA, they had the best winning record. Um, Dennis was fantastic. Uh, I think he averaged about 79.6 points per game and 5.6 points and 16.7 uh, rebounds um, this season, which uh, for me is totally amazing. I also think of the three on the block for the, for the championship, he has the weakest team in terms of lineup. I mean, Chris Middleton can be the next guy in the team and Eric Lesson. Um, as we compare to when this was and Tony Davis or the Guardian, who are Eric Gordon, Westbrook, you know, so as well. So you look at the impact of the individual players and what they're able to do with their team. I think Yannis, you know, deserves that award. Um, you can make no disrespect to the one. James Floyd is phenomenal this year, playing in his 17th season. Oh my God, you know, it's been absolutely, you know, um, unbelievable basketball for me. But if you want to go by the rules of engagement, which is the best last season and now, but they, they have, the Lakers played good basketball this year, but you could see how much Yannis did up the level of the team from last year when he won the league. You know, they improved tremendously and basically just because of his individual effort. And we saw games where I think Davis didn't show up and the Lakers, you know, they, they were not, they were not amazing. Even though the Bengals did the Bengals thing, we also saw, you know, um, same as the uh, Houston Rockets. So for me, I think Yannis is up there. What I think should get it. But you know, now that the postseason has come, to, which is one of the worst problems I have is when the awards take place. Yeah. I think once the regular season is done, let's get the award out to the field and let's move on. Because now, if your mind is going to change, you know, the buyers now start judging the quality of the players. Because the playoff basketball is totally different from the regular season. Yeah. Not every player is set for that um, in terms of mindset and what it takes to win at that level. I mean, a lot of these players go through it and get better over the years. LeBron James is too many. Um, before you came, you know, you know, the same thing you know, for the other players in the past. So it's usually so far when you get to the period of the year. And I think it becomes a bit young, to be honest. Um, how just bad you know, what you know, what was you know, the most um, young that you should have to get All right, Yanis should get this one. But then do you think there will be a bit of bias uh, since the restart of the NBA and, of course, the all players getting into the bubble? Yeah, I, I think there will be a, a, a little bit of sentiment. Which, which is what I was trying to allude to, is the fact that the timing of the NBA Awards is a bit um, wrong um, for one award there. I think it's four timing. You see at the end of it, usually regular season ends, then we go to the final game. Why don't we just give the award as soon as the regular season is done? Give the Coach of the Year Award as soon as it's Because that's what we are doing. And, and that's what the rules say. You know, based on this performance. So by the time you get into the playoffs and you have played through, you know, the first round, second round, before the finals, now you have another metric to use to judge the performances of the players. And then you now begin to question what is done in the regular season, which which um, is the case. So I think there might be a level of bias because the Yannick for you know, not being for not being able to take the team out of the old um against Miami, um, which I think is a learning call for him. And of course, it shows that he also has been taking in the work on like every other player at that level. But when it comes to the importance of a player to his team and how much influence he has in how they improve, you know, and how much they will do that in the after, um, Yannick should be, it's called the most valuable player. But yeah, I think it's a very player of the team in the NBA. All right. Thank you very much, Femi, as always, uh, for joining in the conversation and, of course, sharing your analysis. Always a pleasure being on the show with you. Yeah, and um, right. Joker, I'm going to call you. Yeah, that's uh, fine. <laughs> yeah, I, he I called. I think I could make it to the show, which unfortunately I couldn't do that. It's fine. Some day, sometimes, it will happen.
All right, thank you very much once again, Femi. He called me Yanis, and I'm wondering, yeah, maybe, maybe I bore like Yanis, <laughs> and I'm wondering. Yeah, let's go over to the next one now. I mean, we were all, uh, uh, my predictions actually went wrong. I, I predict, predicted that the, the Toronto Raptors were going to defeat the Boston Celtics. It went wrong. Marker got me on that one, so it's fine. I give her that one. <laughs> now we have the Los Angeles Lakers, the Houston Rockets, Denver Nuggets, the LA Clippers, the Boston Celtics, and the Miami Heat. Now, for the Nuggets, they seem to be on a miraculous path uh, in their series against the Los Angeles Clippers. It's now 3-2. Um, miracles still happen. But do you believe the Nuggets can get something against the Clippers? No. Nah. <laughs> no. I mean, I think they're really trying, I mm. mean, to even get the series this yeah. far. But I, I believe in the Kawhi factor. I know he's going to turn it up. And I, I, I would be so shocked if the Denver Nuggets knock out the Clippers. Like, For I would real? really be shocked. Because, yeah. I mean, Kawhi knows when it comes down to the wire and down mm. the stretch, he knows how to turn it up. True. So... I don't know. What about you? <laughs> Kawhi is playing like the best player in the world right mm. now. I think he feels he's the best player in the world. And they have a very solid bench. These yeah. guys perform consistently. Although they had a bad game last, last night, but I don't think they ever have everything to push to get them over the hump. So if you're going to make a prediction on who you think the eventual winner of the uh, players will be, will it be Clippers? Uh, I think Clippers. Oh. I think they have a better chance over Lakers. Because one of the because of the bench, mm. like I said, the Lakers don't have so much production except from AD and LeBron James. LeBron. But on the Clippers team, you have six players scoring in double digits, and these guys can really defend. Mm. They can really defend. True. I also like Miami's chances. Okay, that's my team. <laughs> oh, your team. What happened to the Warriors? Yeah. That's what I put, no, well, that's what I, who I have my money on now. Oh, okay. You know, the Warriors are not around, so I have to go for somebody. All yeah. right, uh, I agree. <laughs> but you, you, you do agree with him for the Clippers or you're going with Miami Heat? Okay, so for the Western Conference, um, that Clippers-Lakers matchup is going to be quite interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but like he said, yes, the Clippers has a better bench. Um, a lot of guys to add to the um, points, yeah. a lot of guys to defend. Um, the Lakers, not so much. I mean, you have Rondo, you have Dwight, but they're not really that consistent. Rondo's mm -hmm. just getting back. Um, he's been playing okay, though, since he's sure. been back. But, I mean, aside from that AD and LeBron, there's not really a, um, a lot of contribution. Mm -hmm. He has Kuzma, who's He'll okay. show up tonight. He won't show up the yeah, next night. It's consistency. So, but the Clippers, they're very consistent. Paul George struggled a little bit in the beginning mm. with his shooting, but he's gotten a balance now. Um, so he is putting up points and contributing to the team. Um, so I, it's going to be interesting. I, yeah. I would put my money on, I would put my money on the Lakers only because. Okay. I believe that LeBron and AD, when it comes down to the wire, mm. they are very clutch. Okay. And on the other side, you have pretty much just Kawhi, who's clutch. Yeah. If they can, if the Clippers can find a way to slow down LeBron and AD and contain them, then yeah, the Clippers will win. Mm. True. You know, uh, Victor, looking at the Clippers and the Lakers now, if you can hold on to, if you can play a solid defense against Kawhi, uh, I think whatever team it is, they will stand a chance against the Clippers. But looking at the Lakers, LeBron seems unstoppable. He, he seems like nobody can actually handle his offensive play. And uh, he knows how to draw the fouls to him and get the free throws and all that. So it looks like an advantage would go to um, the Lakers than the Clippers side. Um, like I said, um the bench is a major factor. Yeah. The bench is a major factor. These guys will definitely put up their numbers. I, you, we've seen Kawhi and LeBron go at it over the years, mm -hmm. and the numbers are always there. For AD, we really don't know who's going to match up with him because that man is a great talent. Sure. Yeah. They have other guys on the Clippers team that have really stepped up. Marcus Morris is shooting the lights out. Paul George is better right now. We have Lou Williams coming off the bench. The sixth man of the year, and yeah. Montrezl Harrell is doing great. So. It's going to take a lot to knock those guys off. Mm. So, um, Clippers all the way. But yeah, let's see how that turns out for the team. Remember to call into the show. It is 0906-0005719. So, Maka and um, Victor, they think the Clippers will get to pick this one. But mm -hmm. the Lakers stand I a chance. Miami Heat. <laughs> oh, Miami, <laughs> really? <laughs> Miami Wow. Heat. <laughs> Let me okay. tell you why I think Miami right. Heat. Okay, so, first of all, 
they've been the first two rounds, they've been eight and one. They've okay. only dropped one game. Mm. They went through the Pacers, swept them. Went through the Bucks, almost swept them. Mm -hmm. They got one game in. So they've just been playing on a different level yeah. than I, I feel like than any team in the playoffs right now. They've been consistent. Even the playing games, they were pretty consistent. They're just clicking. Mm. You have um, Bam Adebayo, Nigeria. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's, we'll in my own. <laughs> He's in the paint taking care of everything. You mm -hmm. know, he brings that fire. He, he, he's good defensively. Mm -hmm. He has that presence inside. You know, you have Jeremy Butler. I love Jeremy. He has a little personality, you know, but he comes in and just does what he does best, mm -hmm. which is he scores very effort, effortlessly, yeah. grabs his boards, does what he needs to do. You have Kendrick Nunn. You have Drogic. Like, they have a lot of guys that can contribute mm. to what they're doing. Yeah. And even you have the veteran Iguodala from the Warriors who just brings them that defensive presence, clean up the boards, mm -hmm. scores a few points here and there, and everyone just plays in their roles, but they play as a unit. And mm. right now, out of any team in the NBA, they're the most sound team and the most consistent. I would not sleep on Miami. Mm. All right, let's see how that turns out for Miami and, uh, of course, uh, Victor's Clippers. But for me, uh, I think I'll sit on the fence on this one because the teams are too unpredictable and uh, I can't really say who will go all the way because it's basketball, it's the playoffs, anything can happen in that one. But, yeah, we'll still we'll go on a break and, uh, of course, I will come back and talk about the very best of football, which resumes in the EPL and, of course, the Spanish La Liga uh, later today. Thank you very much, Marca and Victor. It's Thank always you. a pleasure. And uh, we look forward to having that one-on-one -on -one game with you, Marka. Yeah. <laughs> Be better bring your A game. That's yeah, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Victor, uh, Victor uh, before I let you go, quickly, your thoughts on the basketball situation in Nigeria. Because it's, it, we've not really had basketball. Yes, we hear that something is coming up for um, the men and grassroots, but nothing solid yet. It's appalling. Mm. Um, there's no other way to describe it. I, I wish I could point out what the problem is. Mm. But there's so many problems. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. I don't get. I don't get why there's a tussle. Mm. I really don't understand it. If you really want the game to improve in the country, you have to create something. Sure. Yeah. And I've always been an advocate for having even two parties. Yeah, you have your faction. This guy has his own faction. Set up two leagues. Yeah. You give. You get players to play more games. You have the opportunity to earn more money. Mm. And don't don't just mess things up. True. Yeah. yeah true. It's messy right now. Nobody wants to get involved in basketball. Mm. No companies want to invest, and it's really tough. Wow, it's really tough. And if we need to get the best out of these players, I'm sure we need to start off from the grassroots, but we don't have anything uh, going on at the moment. But of course, we hear that the MVB have signed a sponsorship deal with an oil and gas company. And by Tuesday, uh, that will be re revealed to the, uh, the press, and uh, we'll be right here to give you up to date information. Thanks, uh, guys, once again. It's always a pleasure. Wonderful to be here. All right, we'll go on a break, and when we come back, it will be all about football. We'll be right back. <laughs>